Good morning, and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time joining us and tuning in, and we want to uh, extend to you a warm welcome and glad that you're with us. Um, we want to begin with prayer. We want to pray for the direction of our nation, our world. Uh, we also want to pray that God would continue to open up great doors of utterance uh, in our local community here. We also want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the spirit of truth that is in all of our lives. Father, we pray for the direction of this nation. We pray for the influence of your word, your spirit, and your people upon the direction of this world and this nation. We also pray for our local community and pray that you'll continue to open up great doors of utterance for your people. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. We pray that you'll continue to keep the windows of heaven opened up over your people. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for a hedge of protection to be furnished for every one of them. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ and everybody said amen. Drawing your attention this morning to John chapter number 15, incredible passage of scripture, famous passage of scripture, and rightly so. Let's begin in John 15 and verse one. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Okay, the husbandman would be uh, in our minds, in our culture, it would be like the farmer. He is, he is uh, the boss. He is in charge of overseeing the crops. Jesus is the connector between the two. I am the true vine. My father is the husband. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. That's very important. I wanna read that again and it's critical our devotional this morning. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a, man, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Critical scripture here. Look at verse number eight, and then we're going to stop reading. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples, okay? I wanna to talk to us about um, connected, but not affected. Connected, but not affected. John chapter 15 um, is directly describing the relationship between an individual and God. However, in the illustration that Jesus uses, it's of a vineyard, okay, that's describing at the nucleus this relationship. And Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And so the branches are connected to the vine. The father is the husbandman. He is the overseer of the vineyard. 
And so the environment, any, any husband then that knows if you're going to have a prosperous and a profitable vineyard, um, I'm just laying a little bit of groundwork here. The ground has been cultivated and is free of, of um, debris, it's free of weeds, it's free of thorns, it's free of any other foreign agencies that could, that, could, that could absorb the nutrition and absorb the needed water for, uh, for this vineyard. Um, as a responsible husbandman, um, he, he has, uh, the, uh, I don't know if he had it in ancient times that they had a scarecrow, which seems to be more of an American type of a tradition, tradition, but there was the elimination of the pests and an elimination of, of the little foxes that spoil the vine and the elimination of the crows that eat the fruit and the magpies and, and the jays and, and all of that, because we're talking about a responsible husbandman. Jesus said, my father is the farmer. And so as a responsible farmer, the environment is ripe for growth. It's not the environment's fault. Proper ground, proper um, nutrients in the ground, all of the pests are being removed. Um, everything, everything is right. Jesus goes on to describe that every branch that's connected to me that beareth not fruit, the Father taketh away. Okay, that, that is critical because the branch, this is the description by Jesus, the branch is automatically connected to vine. You're not going to have a branch without a vine. The branch is the outgrowth of, of the vine. And so there's automatic connectivity there. There is connected this, connectedness there. But for whatever reason, when a branch does not produce fruit, let's explore that for a few moments. Um, a branch that is not producing fruit in this particular passage of scripture, it's because the relationship between the branch and the vine is not what it ought to be. Jesus is talking about this level of dependence when he said, make sure that you are abiding in me and I in you, for without me, you can do nothing. The producing of fruit Season after season, trial after trial, situation after situation. There's people um, that are watching this devotional this morning that are probably wondering, I don't know why this is going on in my life. I understand. I remember as a new convert very many years ago because my epistemology, my my outlook, my, my inlook and my outlook was adjusting to this walk of truth that I was wondering what was going on in my life. It's only, it's only through the benefit of experience that you learn to understand that these types of situations that happen in your life are being allowed by God. What's happening? There are seasons in a person's life, just like there are seasons that are described in the agricultural um, equation or description here through having a vine and a branch. There are seasons. And at a particular time of every season, the dead branches are removed. They are not removed for any other reason except because they encumber new and prosperous growth. You see this everywhere where there's, uh, no matter what it is, whether it's orange trees, apple trees, Whatever, whatever kind of trees uh, and fruit is being grown, there's workers in the field that are removing the dead branches. Why? Because this creates an environment that there could be greater fruitfulness. There can be greater personal prosperity and, and development and evidences of God in us through the various seasons of our lives. And so God is there to help us remove the dead branches from our lives that are never going to bring blessing. They are never going to bring answers to prayer. They are never going to be prof profitable. They are not in our best interest. They're not going to serve us 
uh, us becoming eternal beneficiaries through the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are areas of our lives that absolutely are going to stand in the way of what God wants to do. So God is purging us of these things. But through the years, and this is really where I want to park with this, through the years, I have noticed that people can become connected to the church and not connected to Jesus. I have seen, and, and oftentimes this hits me in different ways when I comprehend that there are individuals that are connected to the church, but they are not connected to the vine. I want to encourage you to go back and review where you are. I want to take note of one verse here that's going to help encourage us. Listen to what it says here. It says, herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The entire point of this whole beautiful illustration that Jesus uses of the relationship and the connectedness that takes place between us and Jesus and the results, the benefits, the fruit, the evidences of that connectedness is fruit. No matter how many seasons it takes, no matter what type of purging has to take place, there are going to be evidences of this connectivity, this godly, supernatural connectivity in our lives. There will be fruit. There will be evidence that God is in this. But through the years, and I don't say this as a critic, but as a, as a practitioner as an observer, that I have seen people that come into the church, maybe they, they come in and they have an extremely, they have a damaged self-esteem or they have a wounded spirit or they have been mistreated or abused in their lives. If we do not allow those, those branches of our old nature to be completely purged with new evidences of new connectivity and new relationship, then we will find ourselves on the outside looking in. Jesus uses an, an interesting illustration. He says, men gather them to be burned. Men gather them. I want to have a relationship with Jesus that is producing fruit. And I, if I'm walking in truth and living by the word of God and have a current consecrated prayer life, et cetera, et cetera, I should be the very first one that is seeing growth, seeing a little green leaf, seeing the evidence of going through a trial, seeing the godly benefit and evidence of going through a valley experience in my life, season after season after season after season. If you are not seeing that in your life, but you're all caught up with what a brother said or a sister said, or this is what the church thinks, or this is how the pastor treats me, or this is, you have missed this. You are connected, but not affected. The real purpose and overall design of your life is not in alignment. Get rid of all that. Understand that that is lies of the devil or lies of, of, of your carnal thinking or just a stumbling block to the reality that all of us, all of us are so, so blessed to be connected to the vine. I want to be connected and affected. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.